Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Pokemon White version. Last time, we crossed the intense tube line bridge, but it wasn't too intense for us. The soles of our feet were tougher, and we had a fateful encounter with Getsis, who spelled out his plan for us, telling us that N has been groomed to be the hero since he was young. But then we had our spirits picked up because Hilbert has become the name that is now going to strike fear into the hearts of mamas and grandmas everywhere. And that face that you see right before you is now the face of gang violence in Unova. <laughs> he was adopted as the mascot for the gang formerly known as the Black Empolia. <laughs> How? Why? Why it's... It's pretty funny, at least. This time, we have made it onto Route 9, and we got some exploring to do. We heard that there's a lot of trainers looking for fights on this route, despite how short it is, so let's get going. You a heartbreaker? Do you want to pass through here? Then, you must greet me. I like this. It's like an entire cult of Charles that are just growing around the area. I like that quite a bit. You got a Crocorock on your team. Okay. Well, I probably better get the hell out of Dodge. Uh, you're a biker, though, so does that mean that you respect me now that you have met the Garboder that inspired all this stuff? Uh, I want to mention that Hex. I switched out its held item a while ago. We just haven't had it doing much fighting in all this time, so we haven't really gotten to see it. Hex now has... Um, um, the Never Tell Mice is the item. I was wanting to say the Never Melt Ice, and I was like, wait, no, I should probably call it by the name that I've always given. Uh, yeah, it has the Never Melt Ice equipped. I thought that we could make the Ice Beam a little bit more potent now that we're not really in need of Flash Cannon quite as often, but it'd be good. In addition to that, this short but sweet route has a lot of new Pokemon to meet on it, so how about we start off with your bestest, most closest favorite Pokemon in the whole wide wacky world? Garboder is a poison type tank with no especially bad stats aside from special attack and outspeeds lots of other tanks. Biggest downfall is that it barely learns any good physical attacks, as we have seen many times. Like everything we're about to see, the encounter rate is the same as it is in dark grass as it is in light grass, but the level is gonna be significantly higher if caught in dark grass, so you have nothing to lose by trying to catch it there. Its starting moveset in Route 9 always has Body Slam and Sludge Bomb. Again, why Sludge Bomb and not Poison Jab? Continuing the tanky Pokemon found in Route 9, Return of the Tanky Psychic Types, Gotharita. Only found in black version. Reflect and light screen TMs are great options that you've had access to for a while now, of course. What is fantastic is that Gotharita around here are all about to evolve and are on the verge of learning Psychic. It's very tanky and is a good support Pokemon in team player between light screen and telekinesis. If you don't know, Telekinesis makes the enemy immune to ground type moves, but bypasses accuracy checks on them. It sounds great, but it just doesn't learn that many high power, low accuracy moves at all. It's kind of a shame since this means it's only really able to be useful in double battles or if you switch. And this is a land comprised almost entirely of singles. If you still want to get it, get it so that you can use Psychic and for its defensive capabilities. Or if you prefer, 5% of the time in Rustling Grass only is a guaranteed level 34 Gothitelle. It has full stats, but there isn't much other benefit to picking it up over Gotharita. It's lower level than any Gotharita, level up moves are identical, so it's a longer road to learning psych. And now for Revenge of the Revenge of the Tanky Psychic Types is Duosion only in white version. A lot of the same things about Gotharita are true here. About to evolve, about to learn Psychic, but it hits a lot harder and has tons of HP in return for its sluggish speed. This is a great time to pick it up and it can definitely work for you. Uh, once again, remember that you can't teach it Trick Room for a very long time. Just like Gothitelle, Reuniclus is found 5% of the time only in Rustling Grass, and again, it is level 34 and has no other outstanding benefits than higher stats at a lower level. Moving on to what you can actually catch in both versions, Ponyard. You could be so much better than you are. Why are you this way? The fact that your stats are, well, look at them, and it doesn't even evolve until level 52 is pretty much all you need to know. It doesn't even matter how good of a Pokemon it is because it's never gonna get that far. Not even bringing up the fact that it has three weaknesses that are very common and its speed is, um, shall we say, below average, but I'll make the pain of its uselessness sting all the much harder by telling you that everything else about it sounds like it would be great. 
Immunity to Psychic is good. Poison Immunity is a decent bonus. It has great moves, and Defiant is an awesome ability. But there's just so little reason to put up with Little Ponyard so that you can have a Bisharp. It's a shame, too, because I like Bisharp. I just wish it evolved at a lower level. I don't know if you pay attention to what's going on in gameplay whenever we're going through the bios of all the new Pokemon and being all informative and all that stuff, but if you don't, I want you to go back and watch the double battle that we just had because that has got to be the silliest way to win a double battle that I've seen since, well, World Championships. But seriously, it was such a dumb fight. <laughs> I don't even want to spoil for you what happened in it. Just go back and watch in disbelief. Carboder son is down. That was just a joke. He didn't have to take it so seriously. He wanted to steal our Pokemon if we lost the fight. What do you have to say for yourself? Bah, I haven't fallen so low that I would steal somebody's Pokemon like Team Plasma. If and you say so. So yeah, there's a lot of Pokemon that you can encounter around here, and a lot of them are kind of interesting. Says the guy who was all like, hey, you probably better find a Pokemon for your team pretty soon because there's lots of bad Pokemon up ahead. Don't worry, it'll come. It'll come. Just because it hasn't yet doesn't mean it won't. Antidote, antidote. Good thing I had Lillipup to pick up all of those for me. I'm actually kind of missing the entourage of Lillipups that we had all that time ago. I know that we moved on to bigger and better fish like Garboders and Cryogonals, but... I still kind of wish that we could have, you know, spent a little bit more time with it, because it was nice just having those free items coming out all the time and seeing all the ridiculous stuff the dog dragged in. We're going to go down a little bit here, as there are some things that we can do. First of all, grab an HP up. Let's put that, let's put that on Hex. I think it's in much, in much more need of effort values than Hilbert is. He's probably pretty close to getting maxed out. And then I saw another item ball down here. What are you? Full Restore. And I probably better turn on my dowsing machine, because, yep, there's definitely stuff down here. Only strong Pokemon live in this cave. The champion occasionally goes in for training, but you aren't ready for this challenge. Glad to know you could tell that by looking at me. Well, okay, I guess he kind of knows who the champion is. Max Ether right there, because there weren't enough hidden PP restoring items already. Nothing over this way, nothing over here, but there is something. Thing over this way, and it's a biker! <laughs> no one can beat my speed and fury. Picking up a can of lemonade off of the road, but it's okay, it's not unsanitary. Because I'm not the one who's gonna be drinking it. Don't tell Haywire. We're nitpicking. Is there anything you got for us? Join our team. Actually, I will force you to join our team. Buddy, I didn't just join your team. I own the mascot. <laughs> rough neck. If your neck really is that rough, maybe it's a good thing that we can't see it with the way that you're posing right now. Gotta forever keep that a secret. And Hilbert, getting a lot of chances to use your focus blast right about now. Yeah, you are. Happy it's not missing a lot. And once again, Scraggy looking like it's got a broken neck there. There it is. Happy that I gave you a good fighting type move. Team doesn't need a trainer who's quite that strong. We are cool! We hang out here every day. I hope he actually did bust out into the James voice right there. Can never read it. Uh, I guess we're getting a honorary fresh water for our visit to Route 9. I wanted to buy a few lemonades because I've actually run out out of using so many. Besides, I'm rolling in so much dough, I got flour coming out of my pants. Just saying a lot of lame things on this route. Try pressing select while organizing a PC box. It'll let you move your Pokemon around more easily. I might want to talk about that next time we go to a PC. Well, of all places, on a route is the department store of Unova. There are some people in this mall who will challenge you to battles. Welcome to Shopping Mall 9. It's called 9 because it's on Route 9. You can remember it by thinking like this. Done shopping, 9. I hope that's German because that's kind of what I was going for. On the first floor, they sell medicines. On the second floor, they sell TMs. And different kinds of mail. I bet it's a different kinds of mall, that's why I paused. And on the third floor, they sell items for raising stats and battle items. Really admire Mr. Clyde, the Pokemon gym guide, so I'm practicing being a guide too. Explaining things to people in stores is really, really fun. I used to do it in GameStops trying to sell people on the Wii when I was a young teenager, and I really annoyed the managers there by doing it. Good trainers never only use brute force. They think about many different strategies, such as which Pokemon to use uh, uh, to and moves to use in battle, and or the best to use an item. 
But I swear I had the best intentions, though. It was kind of nice seeing old folks' faces light up when they didn't understand video games, and I was explaining to them what the Wii was like. It was, it was just kind of a magical time. I haven't mentioned it yet, but we actually did have badge rewards from the Freeze Badge. We have the capability to buy max potions. Again, you'd be extremely unlikely to actually need this for any practical reason. Really, it's over double the cost of a hyper potion which resource 200 and it would only really have use in battle if you had a Pokemon with over 200 HP that you need to recover. I don't think you'll need this, but it is there. The trainers in big stadium and small court have also gotten a lot stronger. And why haven't I mentioned it until now? The order of meeting the gym leader and getting to know them and then fighting them was very different, so I felt the order of explaining things should be as well. Or, no, I actually just forgot because things were kind of moving at a breakneck pace and I was getting really, really caught up in getting a move on with the story. It happens. I'm a little bit too passionate about the games that I play, I'll admit. All right. Well, no harm done. We've gotten to see that now. Shopping Mall 9. Colorful and wonderful. It might be wonderful, but I wouldn't say colorful. Everything's just kind of gray. If we go in. This mountain of cardboard. They're all full of electronics we can't sell anymore. They're just going to waste. I wonder if somebody, someone could put them to good use. Hmm, perhaps maybe we could meet somebody that could do that for us someday. If anybody wants all this old junk, I swear you could give it to people that are living in poverty and they'd probably really appreciate it, but I guess you're just not thinking of those people right about now. Have you heard? There's a cave along Route 9. I don't know exactly where it is or what's in it though. Neither do I. Hello, welcome, how may I help you? He sells all kinds of balls. We can finally, finally buy dusk balls and quick balls. Or not dusk balls, quick balls. I can't, sorry. We can finally buy quick balls. I want these. It's been a long time coming. I'm really happy we can. It makes sense why we haven't been able to buy quick balls all this time. I don't think we could have bought timer balls either. That was the other ball that I was thinking of. It makes sense because quick balls, they really should be used as just cleanup for your Pokedex to get all the Pokemon that you've missed along the way. They should not be available to you too early game because they are really, really good and you don't need much of anything else for catching much of anything. Uh, you want all of the TMs. Very admirable goal. Oh, I'm a rich boy, so I have great Pokemon. Isn't it not? Okay, well, I'm probably going to make a lot of enemies out of sports fans right now, but I've never understood, actually, the concept of rooting for, like, rich people in sports. I mean, I know that all the teams have a lot of money, don't get me wrong, but I mean, the really super ultra mega richest team in the league that just buys all the good players, I'm an outsider looking in. I'm not really one who watches sports much myself. I get why people get into them, and, you know, it, it can be a fun time, like, going to a game or something that I just don't really follow it much, but... I've never understood why that is. Like, that sounds incredibly boring to me to root for, like, the richest team that just buys all the good players off of the other teams and wins that way. Because um, maybe I feel this way because I grew up in Arizona, but I remember that um, when the Diamondbacks beat the Yankees in the World Series, it was such an exciting time. It was inescapable. And then they bought Randy Johnson off of the Diamondbacks, like, a year later. So, gee, it was nice while it lasted. That's kind of how it felt to live in Arizona at the time. Uh, Hyper Beam and Giga Impact. These are 150 power normal type moves where you need to recharge the turn after that you, you use them. Um, Hyper Beam is special. Giga Impact is physical. That's the only difference. If you're playing on Switch Battles, these are excellent moves and you should definitely consider them if you just want a high powered normal type move because KOing the opponent with these moves effectively means you don't have the downside as long as you're willing to switch. Even when I'm resting from too much shopping, I'm willing to battle. Got another rich trainer here. Probably means that we're gonna get a lot of prize money in the process. Maybe I should have put the amulet coin on before coming in here, but oh well. You have a Stoutland. You can be rebattled. That might make you a really good EV trainer. I, I like EV training against um, any trainers that are like rich boys or ladies just because they have tons and tons of money, so be sure to beat them up. Obligatory reference. Oh gosh, no. Haywire, you had a rough battle against a Stoutland earlier. Let's see if you can redeem yourself. I don't need to set up because you only have one Pokemon, so let's just brute force through. So much for trainers, don't just use brute force. <laughs> okay, all you're gonna do is crunch. We got this in the bag. Down you go. Hilberger level 42, exactly what I wanted to see. Oh no, I'm still the best, the one to beat in shopping competitions. Like, Supermarket Sweep? I missed that show. I liked it a lot when I was three. I'm just recalling a lot of things from when I was a kid living in Arizona, aren't I? 
I'm a waiter who is good at Pokemon battles. We fought somebody like you. They were a gym leader, and you're not. Let us hope you don't serve me my balls on a silver platter. A uh, Minchino, all right. Hilbert, still getting those opportunities to use this Focus Blast. Please don't miss. Hooray, I am above average in this. It's so cute. It's just smiling at us and dancing around as it goes down. Makes you feel almost bad for beating it up. Lampent. Not a Pokemon we've seen a lot from the trainers. I think somebody had it in the battle subway, but that's been the only one that we've seen so far. I really do like that family. Actually, um, this would be a good opportunity to talk about this. I've mentioned that there are a lot of Pokemon that didn't make the cut for the team, and that's always the case, because there's always way more than six Pokemon I like per generation, contrary to what some people might feel about Unova. I, I've acknowledged before that there are a lot of Pokemon that I don't like here, and I've definitely made fun of them a lot, but there are a lot that I do like. And I will say that the Litwick family was one of the ones that just barely didn't make the cut. I just didn't really want to use it out of wanting to do things that were interesting and honestly feeling like it's possibly the best special attacker in the game, and I was even going to say that about it. I like using different things that people might not have seen before, and I feel like Crocodile is the most used member on the team, uh, whereas everyone else is kind of an unlikely hero. I just wanted to do that, and that's kind of also why I didn't use Darmanitan, just because I did. I know there's an item called a Thunderstone. So you know Thunderstones make certain Pokemon evolve, then nice! Meeting here must meeting here must be fate. This is for you. Is it a Thunderstone? <gasps> I cannot believe the results. And then the thing I buy most is an item for his Pokemon HP. It's called HP Up. Now, there are a lot of other items that catch my eye. I'm betting that you guys are vitamin salesmen. Or your X item salesmen. I think we've gone over all these at one point or another. And I believe that we've seen all these before. I could actually raise some of the EVs of my Pokemon. We got $283,000 that we're not spending on anything. Let's do it. I'm gonna buy a few calciums just to hopefully mitigate my bad nature on Cryogonal. I'm kind of feeling like Cryogonal is that guy who tries really, really hard even though he's the awkward one out and doesn't really have many friends because he hasn't really had much of a, um, or it hasn't had much of a relationship with the rest of the team. It's genderless though, but it it's kind of like that where it has a bad nature even though it does have some merits, but it just kind of stands out as the one that is noticeably less talented than the rest. <laughs> I kind of like that for you. Very fitting for Kragonal being a Pokemon that a lot of people forget about. That is Shopping Mall 9. I like that it's all one big wide open area so you don't have to wait through elevators to be able to get to the different parts of it. So now, we just got this gate to go through. Munch Munch, I heard there's a guy with a legendary Pokemon visiting Upper Lucid City. Munch Munch. You heard right, I'm here. Hello, Blair. This way. Gets this. What a liar. Desperately trying to con everyone with his speech. That's correct! Our Lord N has combined his power with the legendary dragon type Pokemon and intends to create a new world. We herald the return of the hero of Unova, founder of this region. Pokemon are different from people. They are living beings who contain unknown potential. They are living beings from whom we humans have much to learn. They are beings whose greatness we should acknowledge. Beings who should be freed from our oppression. We, Team Plasma, invite you to join us. We want to create a new world where people and Pokemon are both free. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you now, please release your Pokemon. And so I end my plea to you today. Thank you one and all for your attention. Is it true? Have we been making Pokemon suffer? Hmm. Maybe we should release our Pokemon like Team Plasma says. No way! But that Pokemon will be lonely and sad! What was that about? That speech was off the chart, Strange! 
The cooperation of people and Pokémon is how Unova came to exist to begin with. If a Pokémon really didn't want anything to do with humans, it would simply leave. Capturing a Pokémon in a Pokéball doesn't mean you've captured its heart. Let's go, Blair. It's been a while, Iris and Drayden. Oh, Mr. Alder! And the guy who helped me out that time! What's wrong? What does the wandering champion who left the Pokémon League need from us? Briefly, I request is this. Tell us about the legendary Dragon-type Pokémon. Are you talking about Reshiram or Zekrom? What's the sudden interest? Moments ago, a troublemaker known as Getsis was here. He said a trainer named N has reawakened Reshiram. Yes! That trainer called N apparently told Blair here to search for the other Dragon-type Pokémon. Let me check that I have this straight. This N, or what have you, presumes to set, to set the two Dragon-type Pokémon against each other in battle to test his convictions. Oh no! The Dragon-type Pokémon get along so well! That's right, Iris. The ones who make Pokémon battle are, are the trainers. And it's so the trainers and the Pokémon can get to know each other better. I'm going to the Pokémon League. No, I guess in this case, I should say I'm returning to the Pokémon League. Of course I'll defeat Ed. I'll teach him about the beauty of this world, where Pokémon and trainers live together in harmony. Also, Blair, I await your arrival. Once you've obtained the Opelucid Badge, come to the League. The Opelucid Gym Leader is tough. Take care. Farewell. I'm counting on you, Drayden and Iris. Aw, he's gone. Is he okay? He looked kind of scary. Don't worry, Iris. He is the strongest trainer in all of you. Well, Blair, is it? Come to my home. As Alder asked, I'll tell you everything I can about the legendary Dragon-type Pokémon. Iris, child, please show the way. You bet! If it's Opelousid City, I can take you anywhere! As for the story of Reshiram and Zekrom, we'll tell you all we know about it! This way! That way! Just a little farther! This is it! I was hoping you'd say that away! Sure enough, this is the place! Just making sure she wasn't pulling the wool over our eyes. Because with a hairdo like that, she could do that clear across town. <laughs> I'll explain. What you are holding is the Darkstone. Zekrom, who will likely awaken from the Darkstone, and Reshiram, who is already awake, were once the same Pokémon. That single dragon Pokémon, along with twin heroes, brought a new region into being, and people and Pokémon had happy lives! One day, however, the twin heroes, the older brother who sought the truth, and the younger brother who sought ideals, began to argue about how to decide which one of them was right. The single Dragon-type Pokémon that had been with them all that time split its body into two. One sided with the older brother, and the other with the younger brother. In its pursuit of truth, the White Dragon-type Pokémon sought to usher in a new and better world. Its name was Reshiram, and the other, the black dragon-type Pokémon sought ideals to usher in a new world, a world of hope. Its name was Zekrom. Because the two of them were once the same entity, their battle raged endlessly, and neither one could be declared the winner. They simply exhausted themselves. The twin heroes proclaimed that there was no one side that was right and ceased the conflict. But, but, the two heroes' sons started the battle again, and an instant later, Reshiram and Zekrom destroyed Unova with fire and lightning. Then, they disappeared. But, but, if people work with Pokémon in the right way, we don't have to worry anymore about the world being destroyed. I mean, Reshiram and Zekrom worked hard for everyone and made a new region. So, it should be alright, I think. True, Pokémon cannot speak. People may hurt Pokémon even more by imposing their selfish thoughts on them. But no matter what, Pokémon and people believe in each other, need each other, and will continue to live together. Yeah! So I'm never gonna forgive Team Plasma for trying to separate Pokémon and us! Sorry, we got a little off topic at the end. That is everything we know. Unfortunately, we don't know how to wake up the legendary Pokémon. 
I made a promise to Alder. You must win the gym badge from the Opelucid Pokemon Gym. Iris, you go and be Blair's opponent at the Pokemon Gym. Yay! Look out! I'm really, really strong, just like Drayton! What will it accomplish to separate the worlds of people and Pokemon? The way we live now with different beings understanding and forgiving each other is much richer. That's my belief. Next time on Pokemon Black and White, we explore Opelucid City and all that it has. See you guys then.